take a look at this question from the beginning of module 1. So it says that a student was asked to gravimetrically analyze a mixture of salt, sand and water. So just as a note, all gravimetric analysis really is, is the analysis of substances. So in this case, we're looking at salt, sand and water by mass specifically. So there are two parts to this question. The first part asks to identify a suitable separation procedure that will allow you to separate this salt, sand and water mixture. And the second part asks you to calculate the percentage composition of water based off the following data. And then you're given a table of data based off a certain separation procedure that has been used. So the first part is asking you to identify a suitable separation procedure that will allow you to separate this mixture of salt, sand and water. So just some theory first of all. Whenever you're looking at separation techniques or you have a question about what separation procedure you should take, there are two main things you really want to consider. The first thing is what substances are actually being separated. And this will allow you to identify what specific separation technique that you should be using. So first of all, when I'm talking about what substances are being separated, I'm talking about like, is your mix solid solid mixture? Is it a solid liquid mixture? Is it a liquid liquid mixture? What mixture of substances are you actually trying to separate? And again, this will allow you to identify what specific separation technique you should take. And for example, let's take a look at filtration. Filtration is normally used for insoluble solids and liquids. So if you have any mixture of these two, you would normally take a filtration pathway to separate your mixture. And this can be seen just by the, if you draw up the setup, what happens is you have your filter funnel, you have filter paper, and your insoluble solid will be left in the filter paper since it won't be able to go through as what we call your residue. And then your liquid will be able to actually pass through that filter paper and it'll be collected at the bottom as what we call our filtrate. And what you have here is you have your solid and your liquid effectively separated. So again, whenever you're looking at separation technique questions, the first thing you really want to ask yourself is what substances are actually being separated. And then the second thing you might want to consider is what physical property does your separation technique exploit? So again, if we look at our example of filtration, and first of all, when I'm talking about physical property, you're looking at things like solubility, particle size, uh, density, boiling point, and so on. So if we're looking at filtration, the first physical property that it exploits is solubility. So if your solid was actually dissolved in the liquid, this separation technique, so filtration wouldn't actually work anymore because then your solid, which is dissolved in your liquid, will just pass through your filter paper as well. And in your filtrate, you'll just have the same mixture. So nothing is actually effectively separated. Another thing that you might want to consider as a physical property that's been exploited in filtration is also particle size. If your solids were sufficiently small enough, so if they were really, really small particles, then it might actually be able to pass through the holes in your filter paper. And again, pass through along with your liquid. And then you'll end up with, again, a mixture in your filtrate. So nothing is actually effectively separated. So just as a recap, whenever you're looking at separation technique questions, the two main things you want to consider are what substances are actually being separated and what physical property does the separation technique that you're considering actually exploit. So let's look back at the question. What we're interested in is a mixture of salt, sand and water. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like first. So if we have a beaker, and we have water. So first of all, sand is insoluble in water. So it will just collect at the bottom as sand. Then when we're looking at salt, salt, as you should know, is actually soluble in water. So it'll actually dissolve in water. And what they actually form is just a mixture of salt water. So this is what our mixture looks like. We have salt water and then we have sand, which will rest at the bottom as a solid. So now when we're looking at what is a suitable procedure to actually take, whenever you're considering that, the best way to think about it or the best way to go about it is just separate things one by one. You want to start off with the easiest things to separate, which are your solids. So in this case, let's first focus on separating sand out from salt water. So immediately when you're considering what separation technique to take, first of all, consider what substances are you looking at. So we're looking at sand, which is a solid. And we're looking at salt water, which we'll consider together, which is a liquid. And whenever you're separating an insoluble solid from a liquid, the main separation technique that you'll be using is filtration. 
So in this case, what will happen is if we have our filtration set up and we run this mixture through this filtration setup, what will end up happening is sand will be collected as our residue and then the salt water will go through the filter paper and be collected as our filtrate. So sand will become our residue and then salt water will become our filtrate. So we've separated one out of the three from our mixture, our second part, which is separating salt from water. So again, when we're considering what substances are actually being separated into here, this is a solid. Salt is a solid and water is a liquid, so it's a solid liquid mixture. But in this case, salt is actually dissolved in water. So it's a soluble solid and a liquid. So whenever you're separating a soluble solid and a liquid, the main separation technique that you will be considering is evaporation. So again, if we were to draw this out, so we have a tripod, we have our Bunsen burner, we have an evaporating basin, and then we have our mixture of salt water here. As you continually heat this up, what will actually happen due to the physical property of boiling point, so specifically water has a much lower boiling point than salt, so water will be evaporated off. So this is water being evaporated. And what they'll actually leave you is salt crystals, which are solid. So you've actually effectively separated your liquid, so your liquid water, from your salt. So again, you have evaporation, and what will happen is water will be evaporated off, and then you'll be left with salt as residue in your evaporating basin. Just as a note, this separation technique doesn't actually allow you to collect water back. So water will just be evaporated off and you won't actually be able to collect it. Um, normally this is fine. However, if the question does specify that they want to collect back the water, a suitable separation technique in that case would be something like distillation, which again uses evaporation, but it has a condensing tube attached. So it will actually condense back that evaporated water and you'll be actually able to collect that. But just as a note, normally unless they specify you're, they're interested in collecting water, Evaporation will normally suffice.